Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in my previous tutorials, you might be wondering that I was talking since uh, one or two tutorials previously that I would be teaching you to gain access into the system and I have taught you to gain access into the system by being rhetorically but it's just uh, virtually but not actually into the system. You're only the administrator or the normal user right now. So let's see how we can go ahead and gain access into the system. Once you have the interpreter command prompt open over here so you can see I have already the access I have taught in previous tutorial how we can go ahead and gain access into that I'll just type get privs and uh, as you can see these are the enabled process privileges but I cannot actually go ahead and this means that I only have these uh, uh, privileges I don't have the whole system privileges and in order for me to go ahead and get uh, the system privileges I'll have to go ahead and exploit uh, the user account control and I should be able to go ahead and bypass that. So let's go ahead and check if we could go ahead and do that. So I'll just type use priv and as you can see the privilege extension is already loaded. That means I have the privileges but I only have it for the administrator. So but now I want it for the system. So I'll just go ahead and type for system info and see what all things are there. So the privilege access is for test user that is the administrator and Windows 7 and if I go ahead and type get privs over here you can see that I have the shutdown change notification privilege and undock privilege that means if I have these three privileges I mean I am already I'm not just the test user I am the administrator as well but now we want to go beyond this thing and we want to gain access to that so I'll just go ahead and first uh, get the session into background reason being that I don't want to uh, run this from the meterpreter I want this meterpreter on but I want to go ahead and use our MSF console to go ahead and do that. So I will first go ahead and check all the sessions. Okay, sorry, uh, I will have to do that from the background. So I'll just first go ahead and check. I need you type run. Now this is a payload that I'm going to execute. So I'll type run post because it is under the folder named post. Then windows slash local slash sorry no not local it's for the later one a uh, post windows gather slash win underscore privs so this will go ahead and run the post windows database and it will try to give us all the information let's see what happens now as you can see uh, previously when i ran get privs uh, okay i'll just show it out to you if i'm able to Okay, when I ran get privileges, it only showed me the, all the privileges that I have. But when I ran this database, it's showing me that it is not an admin, that means a system admin. It is not the system and user account control is enabled and I am just the test user that is a PC. But if you go ahead and check over here, if I type, you can see I am the administrator. So you might be wondering why it is not showing that I am not the admin. The reason being that Windows 7 has an inbuilt administrator. Whenever you go ahead and uh, try to, uh, if you forget your password, it is a system uh, in, in built local administrator that goes ahead and uh, uh, enables your PC. So let me check if I could enable the other one. I won't be able to do that from over here. I'll have to do that from the command prompt again, which I won't be doing that because I don't need that. And I can change the user account controls from over here. This proves that I am the system administrator. And over here, uh, it, it is showing that I am the admin, but I am not the system admin exactly. It means in deep, uh, the default administrator, inbuilt administrator. I am just a normal administrator that is created by the user. So in order for me to go ahead and do that, I had to go ahead and exploit that and run this into background. So I'll just go ahead and type it over here. I'll just type B S C K G R O U N D. That's background. And the interpreter is shell is still working. If I want to get back to that, I can just go ahead and type sessions hyphen L. It will show me the first one is still working. I can do I space one to get back to that. But I'll just go ahead and get into the background. And just be sure that if if you're trying this, what I'm trying to teach you, make sure that every word, every space is as exactly as I'm typing. Else there will be a problem. And even if uh, by trying once you're not able to do that, the, the uh, you're not able to gain access to that. That means that there may be a timeout uh, limit uh, which uh, this interpreter has to gain access to system uh, by after bypassing the uh, user account control. If you uh, delay that, then again, you won't be able to gain access to that. You will have to start everything from the uh, uh, cipher that is zero. That means from the background again, the one which I would be teaching you right now. So make, just make sure that you do all of these things as quickly as you can. So I'll just do background. Session one is still running. And I'll type 
search UAC and uh, it will take a bit of time because it's trying to gather the database and all the payloads and exploits that is there in the system we would be running one of the exploits and uh, not the payload exactly because we already have the payload in our victims computer so as you can see I have all of these three payloads and one is the post uh, this one which I used previously I have the exploit windows bypass injection which is very good uh, it's given over here but it is uh, quite old and I have the ask will do only go ahead and escalate the execute run as I want to bypass the user account control so I would be using this one exploit windows local bypass so and it is a very good one as you can see it's given excellent so I will use use and I will be using this one uh, so I'll just go ahead and copy it and paste it over here use exploit slash windows local bypass UAC and I'll hit enter that means I am using it. nothing will happen right now once you go ahead and press that so I, after that I will just go ahead and type set I need to set this specific uh, payload to our computer so I'll type set payload windows slash and I'll type meter printer slash reverse underscore TCP because we are going to use the meter printer prompt that's why and I'll hit enter and so as you can see I have set the payload to the windows meter printer reverse TCP after that I will go I need to go ahead and use uh, set the uh, our local host that means our my own computers IP address so I'll type set L host and I'll just go ahead and check and my, this is my IP address so I'll just copy and I'll just paste it over here so 192.168.236.130 yeah, I need to go ahead and set the local port for that where I would gain access and this one thing important that I would like to teach you right now over here that you cannot go ahead and use the same port that you created while using while creating this own original payload through which we have access to the system because if you go ahead and do that it will straight away quit and it won't allow you to even uh, use the normal meter printer because it will have two incoming connections whereas there is only one port so and port is something like for example I'll uh, tell you in detail how exactly a port works let's uh, say for example you want to go ahead and ship something to your house so I'll just go ahead and open the GEDIT okay so uh, let's uh, say for example you want to uh, go ahead and get something to your house so uh, how exactly would you write down the address you will write down the uh, your room number that would be let's say for example 453 would be your room number and then you will type the building name or your society name whatever it is so let's say John John's apartment and then it would be like the uh, where you stay uh, the area so I'll just type let's say Sydney Road the country name let's say for example maybe it's uh, California so I'll just type California and the zip code of whatever 54321 example so and I'll teach you how exactly mm, the system connection works of a port over here over here I'll just go to right 453 is your port that is the room number that means it cannot be the same it cannot accept multiple things at one port so over here this is your port that is your 453 after that this John's apartment this is your IP address range not exactly IP address range or I can go also call it as the Mac ID range and after that this California that means this third part this is your IP uh, that your internet provider so that's uh, ISP so this is how it works so whenever you go ahead and ask for incoming connection it will first check the ISP uh, that means uh, whenever you go ahead and order something they will first check your state once they come to your state they will check your uh, apartment or your road name that is the IP address and MAC ID and then finally the port so in this way it works so now the same thing I want over here I want a good L port name that is a local port name so I cannot use the same name because I am already using that that means you cannot enter two people from the same door so I'll have to use some other port so let's say I'll use 2960 for example and after that 
uh, first thing I would like to tell you is that I, this may not work because I already uh, used a lot of time explaining that. So if this goes and I'm not able to run this, I'll go ahead and run it again just to make uh, you know. And after that, since I have set um, the L port, I need to go ahead and use this session. So I'll just go ahead and type sessions hyphen L. Our this is our, the ID of our session is one. So I'll type set session space one and make sure that this session is only session, not sessions unlike over here and I need you need to make sure that this is in uppercase not lowercase else it will not work set session one and now finally I need to check whether everything is correct so I'll type show options perfect so as you can see this is the IP address of our listener of my computer this is the L port from which we will be gaining the connection and the ID is zero that means we are using it for to go ahead and access windows into 32-bit system so I'll just go ahead and type exploit right now and it should go ahead and exploit that. Let's say if we are able to go ahead and bypass the system settings. I believe it's working perfectly. Perfect. It just ran perfectly. So as you can see, uh, user account control is set to default. And I have already bypassed this setting. If I go ahead and run this in the background, as you can see, I should be getting two uh, connections in total. So if I go ahead and type sessions hyphen L, I have two connections over here. The first one is the default test user, the second one is the administrator. So I will go ahead and type sessions hyphen i space 1. Okay, uh, sorry, I wanted to go ahead into 2. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and type get sys, uh, I'll just type sys info. And I'm still the test user, but let's take if I have the privileges of a system. So I'll just go ahead and try to get system. Perfect, it ran. Whereas previously when I tried to run it, it gave me an error. Let me check if I am able to see that. Okay, uh, let me just uh, check where it is exactly. Okay, task kill. This is where the command prompt is. Okay, we should be here somewhere. When I write get system previously, it did not work. It gave me some kind of error previously. Or rather than going ahead and searching this, I have better idea of actually going ahead and showing you. Let me just check. Okay. So when I type get a privileges previously, it only gave me these privileges. And right now, if I go ahead to the uh, background, if I go ahead and background this session, and if I go ahead and use this session one, and if I type get system, it won't. The reason being that I do not have the, the um, system privileges over here. Whereas in session two, uh, okay, I'll just go ahead and background this session. As in session two, if I go ahead and type get system, it works perfectly. So now I, ha I am the system and I can do anything that I want. That means I can go ahead and uh, edit any of the files that I want. And I can even go ahead and clear the event logs or view my own Windows password, which we did not have when we were trying to access uh, the R desktop, that's the remote desktop. So that is it guys for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be teaching you how we can go ahead and modify the system files so that even if a forensic investigator goes ahead and tries to uh, search as to who accesses the system, he will not be able to. So that's it guys, I'll be meeting you in the next tutorial.